Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is the first in a series about the topic of metabolism, which is just a fancy word for how living cells or living systems store, release, and use the energy inside of their living cells. Now, metabolism is a very important aspect of both animal cells and plant cells. Uh, don't forget that. Uh, plant cells are famous for their building, um, they're the building side of their metabolism because they're able to make biomass or make carbohydrates. And animal cells are more famous for their breaking metabolism or being able to digest or take apart things, something plants generally don't do that much of. Uh, metabolic pathways can be thought of as a tangled system of highways. Uh, you can think of the chain of chemical reactions that make up metabolic pathways as being like a roadway. And all the little cars on the roadway are little bundles of energy. So energy can come in on one road and connect to other roads. And it can get to decision points where it can go one way or another. Um, the energy is going to start somewhere and it's going to end up somewhere else. Um, that's an important idea here because energy cannot be created or destroyed. It doesn't disappear and it doesn't appear from nothing. So metabolic pathways are basically ways of tracing energy as it moves through living systems, the chemistry of living systems. Meta metabolic pathways are interconnected, which means they don't exist in um, isolation from each other. Uh, just like roads are pretty useless if they don't go anywhere or come from anywhere. Uh, metabolic pathways are all about ATP energy. Um, it's the most basic and the small, pretty much one of the smallest energy molecules in biology, and it's ubiquitous. It's found in just about all living things. Um, ATP is in bacteria, animal cells, plant cells, fung fungal cells. It's everywhere. Metabolism is exquisitely regulated, and I like that word exquisite here because the regulation of metabolic pathways is a big part of what cells do from second to second. And when this goes wrong, a lot of um, diseases that, that we have to deal with as humans a lot of times can be traced back to a problem with a metabolic pathway somewhere. Very interesting stuff. Uh, metabolic pathways are controlled or catalyzed by enzymes. Remember, enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions, make them happen faster than they would without the enzyme, but are not a, um, a reactant or a product of the um, reaction that they catalyze. There are basically two categories of metabolism. It's kind of nice when things break down into a dichotomy here. There are catabolic pathways, and this is the side of metabolism that's involved in the taking apart or breaking of bonds to release energy. Anabolic pathways are pathways that do just the opposite. They take in energy and use that energy to build bonds by combining small molecules, for example, monomers, into larger molecules, for example, polymers. So you can think of catabolic pathways as the energy releasing and bond breaking side of metabolism and anabolic pathways as the bond making and energy absorbing side or um, aspect of metabolism. A good way to look at uh, metabolic pathways is by using something called an energy graph. And these energy graphs are always set up the same way. The y-axis is always going to be about the amount of energy. So as you move upward on the graph, you increase the amount of energy something has. And time is always going to be on the x-axis. And it's the timing of the chemical reaction. So from where the reaction starts to where the reaction ends. That's the idea of time here. And Catabolic metabolism has a graph that you can think or have graphs that you can think of this way. You start with a molecule that's made up of lots of parts. Okay, um, here we have a, a molecule that's made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different things. I mean, they could be atoms of carbon, anything you want, doesn't matter, but they're held together by bonds represented by these little white lines. And you'll notice that this molecule is large and it contains a lot of energy because it's up high here. And we're going to take this reactant through a reaction that's going to be catabolic. So that means we're going to break it up into pieces. So we start with a reactant that's large and made up of many different things or different atoms held together by bonds. And we're going to break those bonds and produce products. Okay, and notice that the products are lower in energy. So we have decreased in energy, so we've gone downhill. All right, so the reactants start out high in energy, 
and they end up lower in energy. So remember, energy can't be created or destroyed, so the energy has to go somewhere. So this energy is released into the system or the environment where this reaction happens. And some of that energy is going to be converted to ATP, which is important. This is why we have to take in calories or food calories and digest them, break them apart to get some of that energy into ATP molecules, which our cells can use to do work. Now, anabolic pathways, as you might guess, go just the opposite. We're going to start out with some reactants that are lower in energy, and so they're lower down on the graph. And as we proceed through the anabolic reaction, um, as time goes here to the right, we're going to go uphill and we're going to build a product or products that are made up of joining these pieces together with bonds. And the energy is going to be stored in these chemical bonds, covalent bonds, um, polar covalent bonds, doesn't matter. But that's where the energy is, is existing, so to speak. So the reactants start out low in energy and the product ends up high in energy. Now remember, you can't create energy, so that means energy has to be added, it has to be put in. And of course, this energy is going to be added in the form of ATP. And remember, when you take the energy out of ATP, you convert it into ADP. And the energy that comes out of there is what's pushing this reaction uphill. So the energy that was once in the ATP is now being stored in these bonds here. And in a nutshell, this is what plants do. They take carbon dioxide and they build sugar out of it. And they put the energy into the sugar or the calories into the sugar from ATP energy that they get from sunlight and through a process called photosynthesis. We'll look in more detail at that later on. So remember, metabolism is all about transforming energy, not making it, not destroying it, but transforming it. Uh, for example, when you digest food, you take carbohydrates or fats in our food that are high in calories. Okay, the, the unit of energy that you generally use in biology are calories. All right, and these carbohydrates get digested into smaller molecules, for example, glucose molecules or fatty acid molecules or amino acids. These are monomers. Okay, and some of the energy from the digestion of these monomers now can be transferred to ATP or to body heat. Um, you always make a little bit of heat whenever you do um, a, a catabolic reaction here. Now, there's another way this could go. What if the energy gets converted from food, okay, the calories in our food, the carbohydrates and fat we eat, they get broken down, carried by our bloodstream to our liver and to other places, and can finally end up in body fat. So now we've moved the energy from one chemical to another type of chemical, uh, the lipids in um, adipose tissue or fat tissue in human bodies. Um, this is why people gain weight. If you take in more energy than you burn from day to day and hour to hour, your body will store that energy as body fat. And no living system is going to throw away energy needlessly. Um, one of the reasons why it's so hard to lose weight. So metabolism is all about transforming energy. Uh, we'll pick up in the next uh, power, excuse me, the next video cast about photosynthesis.